Welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be machining the main base plates for my tourbillon and uh, a couple other various smaller components as well. And this is going to be different from the previous videos in that I'm going to be machining on both sides. So these are parts that require machining on, on both the back side and the front side. So I'm going to show you how I accomplish this and, and how I get everything to, to line up. So as you can see, the front side has um, features which need to be machined, and this is the back side. And there you can see it has features to be machined too. And what I do is I'm going to drill three holes on each side of the workpiece. And they're going to be symmetrical along that horizontal line. And this means that after the back side is complete, we can simply flip over the piece, and everything's going to line up perfectly, and we won't have to change any worksite coordinates or anything because those two center screws were exactly in the middle of the workpiece. So before we do that, um, when we mill the back side, we want to make sure it's completely flush and completely flat. And this way, when we flip it over to machine the front side, we want that back to be totally flush to the base plate that we'll secure it to. And so we accomplish this by securing it in four corners with screws. Then I'm going to run a pocket, which is going to cut everything to depth except for those four corners. And then I'll remove those four corner screws and secure the workpiece with the two center screws. And I'll run another toolpath, which will simply take out those four corners. So after we're done with these two operations, the entire back side of the workpiece is going to be totally flush. And then once we have that, I'm going ahead and I'm milling the features which need to be on the back side. So here you can see a simulation. Here's the first step. And notice everything is to depth except for those four corners. So now we'll secure the workpiece with just those two screws in the center. And then we'll run again, but this time the four corners are taken out. So now the back side is completely flat. Then finally we simulate again, but this time we include all the pockets which are going to be machined on the back side. So once we're done with the back side, it's going to look something like this. Now we're going to flip the workpiece over and we're going to machine the front side. And here I'm highlighting all the toolpaths for you so you can see how complicated it is. We're using a lot of different end mills, everything from a half inch end mill all the way down to 1 32nd inch end mill. And in fact, you see that piece with the two pegs, a 1 32nd inch end mill is required to go between those two pegs. So that's how small of a, of a piece we're working with. And so all the tool paths, it looks like a lot going on because we're taking very shallow cuts and we're being very careful not to break any end mills at all. Another thing to note is that we're going to be pocketing the two center screws at the each side, but we're actually not going to bother with the four corner screws. And the reason for this is that if we attach at the four corners with the screws poking out the top of the piece, we actually risk having a collision with our 132nd digit end mill because that does not stick out of the piece very much at all. Here's what it's going to look like when it's finished, and as you can see, all the pieces are held together with tabs. So after we're done uh, cutting the piece out with the machine, we'll cut out the tabs. Like my previous videos, I'll first mill out some work holding holes in my workpiece. Then I drill and tap some holes in my base plate which will be used to secure the workpiece later on. So now you'll see the workpiece attached with four screws at the corners. First, I'm going to mill the back side. I have to make sure the entire side is even, so later on when I flip it to mill the front side, I can be assured the back is completely flush with the base plate. Now you can see I secure the workpiece with two screws in different locations. This allows me to mill the areas of the four screws that were previously on the piece. 
Finally, I mill out some holes which need to be present on the back side of the piece. You can see in this picture all the various holes and pockets that I cut out. Now it is time to flip the workpiece over and cut the front side. Not shown in this video, I use a bandsaw to cut out the metal stock bar on the left and right, such that the back side is now completely machined flat. You can see here I start again by using the four corners to support the workpiece. Now I'm performing a large pocket mills that will effectively get each component down to their final maximum height. You can see here I have attached the workpiece with five screws and removed the screws in the four corners. For the next set of operations, the smallest end mill I'll be using is 1 32nd of an inch, and it doesn't stick out of the tool holder very much. So if I leave those four screws elevated on the corners, I'll risk having a collision with the tool holder. So that's why those screws are removed. It's a time consuming operation, and it took approximately 2 hours and 20 minutes to machine the front side. In fact, my camera ran out of battery while filming, but I think you'll get the general idea. And the main reason it takes that long is because my machine has a maximum spindle RPM of 6000, and that is relatively slow by vertical machining center standards. So if you have a faster spindle, say 20,000 RPM, uh, you can accomplish this much faster. Having said that, I'm not exactly a factory. This thing is just a machine in my garage, so 6,000 RPM will be just fine for now. And here's the finished product right off the CNC machine. Of course, I cut out all the pieces by tabs. Here what I'm doing is I'm using a flex shaft rotary tool to try to get those uneven spots where there used to be tabs. And what this does is it polishes the sides to be nice and shiny and get rid of little ticks or imperfections that were there uh, because of the tabs. Here what I'm doing is I am tapping three small holes. The, the holes have been drilled but now I'm tapping them. The reason this wasn't done in the CNC machine is because I simply don't have a collet that can hold a, uh, a tap this, this small. So that's okay, I'm doing it on my lathe just by hand. A perpendicularity is not super important here. Um, it's just I, I need to get these holes tapped and that's the easiest, simplest way to do it. And here, uh, what I'm doing is I am putting all the parts together, even though I don't have all the components, like the escape wheel or, or anything else um, present, what I'm doing is I'm testing the frame to make sure that all the parts fit. Um, since everything is held together with screws, it can always be undone later. And uh, I just want to make sure everything is fit, and it's a little bit like not wanting to wait till Christmas to open your present. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of this takes hard work and um, I want to see some results. And even though I may not have all the pieces, I, I still want to see this thing uh, in action, in my hand at least. And um, yeah, I can't wait to, to see it assembled. So here I'm showing off the, the bottom two plates, and everything's fitting very nicely. And at this point all that's left to be assembled is the top plate, which uh, basically just holds the pivot for the balance wheel, and I'll also hold the, the spring. These screws are tiny, 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 really easy to drop. Uh, I'm at the point where I basically need tweezers just to, to hold them. But here you see that all the pieces do fit together, and I am super, super happy with the results. So, um, yeah, this project is definitely going to move forward.
and we're going to see this thing tick pretty soon.